Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, Honourable Prime Minister, Honourable Ministers, Honourable Leader of the Opposition, Honourable Members of Parliament and Members of the Public. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the opportunity to present to this August House the National Fire Authority's Integrated Community Fire Warden and Emergency Framework. In addition, Mr. Speaker, sir, I also want to outline the work of the NFA and how the authority meets the challenges of educating Fijians on fire safety to mitigate and minimize the number of fires in Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, the framework was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister on 27th February 2021 at Yako Village in Nandi to create awareness and a state of preparedness when it comes to structural fires. As owners of properties, each citizen has to take ownership and ensure that their properties have the necessary fire safety plans and equipment. Having well-trained community fire wardens and a certified fire safety community is a step in that direction. Mr. Speaker, sir, the people of Yako Village have set the example for all other Fijians. As the Honorable Prime Minister had said at the launch, the best way to fight fire is to prevent fire. And that is the job of all citizens, not just our professional firefighters. The people of Yako have shown that they can keep the community safe rather than being vulnerable and solely dependent on the fire authority. The framework is simply an integrated effort of the government, private sector, and our local communities to enhance resilience and to become stronger and robust. Mr. Speaker, sir, what the framework essentially does is encourage behavioral change and genuine shared responsibility for emergency preparedness. We want to build connections with communities and explore the opportunities for a truly community-centered approach. Mr. Speaker, sir, the exhibition of skills learned by the Yako Community Fire and Emergency Response Wardens was absolutely magnificent to watch. It was a proud moment for the community and the NFA as we witnessed how this initiative has completed completely transformed the youth of Yako Village, who can now contribute more by serving their communities. Mr. Speaker, sir, we were informed by the community elders that the community church, which was once empty, is now filled with these youths. They've taken a step forward by taking ownership of protecting their community. The purpose of this framework is to minimize fires that we see as a regular occurrence. So what we are trying to do is create awareness amongst members of the community and give them a sense of responsibility and preparedness. Mr. Speaker, sir, as the minister responsible, I acknowledge with admiration the integrated effort inbuilt in the framework, which has brought the National Fire Authority, the Republic of Fiji Military Forces, and the Fiji Police Force together to mold these youths. The community fire wardens were trained on basic skills in life-saving evacuation and fire drills, awareness on community policing, sexual harassment, drugs, and self-discipline. The launch of the framework was the pinnacle of this initiation and the beginning of a five-year program to be rolled out in Fiji. In fact, 32 other communities in the Western, Central, and Northern Divisions are ready to be part of this framework. Mr. Speaker, sir, the framework will be rolled out covering a total of 1,193 villages and settlements that are under the ambit of 302 district advisory councillors. With 50% of Fijian population below the age of 27 and a half years and 69% below the age of 40 years, we have the opportunity to engage many more Fijians under this framework we can have a large population fully prepared to identify the structural issues that can be corrected to avoid fires, whilst also being prepared to deal with fires. These youths will be appointed by the community, and they must be physically and mentally capable to undertake training for the field duration, committed and a permanent resident of the subject community. 
Mr. Speaker, sir, 55.9 percent of Fiji's population reside in urban areas. This is attributed to the extension of town boundaries, which are also the legal fire boundaries in accordance with the National Fire Services Act. Approximately 44.1 percent of Fiji's population, or 390,635 Fijians, reside in rural areas. Mr. Speaker, sir, this data is used by NFA for community survey and analysis and includes the identification of communities, community structure, population profiling, and determining the willingness of the community to participate. Mr. Speaker, sir, the role of National Fire Authority's services has evolved since its establishment. The essential services provided by the National Fire Authority no longer just evolves or involves firefighting. They're also skilled in responding to road accident rescue operations, hazardous material response, search and rescue operations, flood and swift water rescue operations, providing emergency ambulance service, first aid assistance, and carrying out urban search rescue operations. Mr. Speaker, sir, with government's assistance over the years, the National Fire Authority has been able to take its services closer to the communities. They've been able to reach out to a large population to put a stop to the occurrence of unwanted fires and attend to emergencies. Mr. Speaker, sir, the number of fire incidents in Fiji is alarming. Fires impact people, property, and the environment. In some cases, the losses are extraordinary, causing deaths, widespread damage to property, and house contents. We cannot imagine the pain of losing everything to a fire, including the lives of our people. Mr. Speaker, sir, in last five years, 46 persons lost their lives in fire incidents. In 2021, there were three deaths as a result of house fire. The effects are devastating to families and businesses and collectively can be substantial. An analysis of emergency response stat statistics over the last five years revealed that NFA responded to an average of over 4,600 calls, of which approximately 50% were on variety of fire-related emergencies such as sugarcane, building, or vehicle-related fire. Mr. Speaker, sir, of greater concern is the number of structural fires that have occurred. Despite NFA having conducted numerous community awareness programs, house-to-house -house visits, and educational uh, institutional programs, the number of residential fire remains consistently high. The statistics analyzed for the last five years have indicated that the NFA has responded to an average of 139 structural fires, of which 91% were for residential properties. Mr. Speaker, sir, there was a slight drop in structural fires in 2020 in comparison to 2019. The NFA attended 133 structural fire incidents in 2020 compared to 140 in 2019. There was a significant drop in the number of commercial property fires in the year 2020, which was eight compared to 18 in the year 2019. The reduction in commercial fires is indicative of the commitment by the private sector to engage NFA in commercial training programs. Mr. Speaker, sir, NFA has conducted 84 commercial training programs in 2019 compared to 54 in 2020 due to COVID-19. The business sector also has annual inspections before compliance certificate is issued. In addition, all commercial building construction plans are vetted for fire safety compliance. The devastating impact of fire to everyone's life can be crippling. In 2019, the total estimated value of property damages caused by fire was 22 million, but in 2020, it was 13 million. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is therefore apparent that there is no room for being complacent based on these statistics. It is envisaged that the integrated approach promoted in the framework will assist in preventing and in dealing with emergencies. The NFA strategic plan for the period 2020 to 2025 outlines the strategies and commitment 
to realize the vision of resilient communities with effective emergency services. The, fire, the first strategic goal related to the strategic plan is the safety and prevention, which focuses on the need to deliver effective risk reduction guidance and activities to prevent fires and emergencies. The achievement of the first strategic goal is expected to result in reduced likelihood of unwanted fires, increased preparedness for emergencies, community's ability to recover from emergencies better, and strengthen mechanisms for protection of critical facilities. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is therefore imperative that an integrated community approach is initiated if we are to realize resilient communities that will work closely with the fire, sa fire service to effectively respond in the event of any emergency. The Integrated Community Fire Warden and Emergency Response Framework is the perfect example of the integrated approach to dealing with fire emergencies. It is a guideline to ensure communities are central to preparedness, response and recovery from fires and other emergencies. Mr. Speaker, sir, this framework has been developed to provide guidance on the roles and activities of communities towards fire safety and the resilience in the face of any emergency. This integrated community approach will enable NFA to work closely with communities and teach them to become first responders in the event of an emergency. Mr. Speaker, sir, Whilst professional agencies such as NFA, police, NDMO, and Ministry of Health remain at the forefront of emergency planning, response, and recovery, the framework promotes resilience as everyone's business. The model for this framework involves a four-step process, and the first and important step is the identification of communities and their willingness to participate. Step two relates to determining the readiness level of the community and identification of distance from the nearest fire station, topography of the area, building structures and building spacing, water supply and other water source provision. Step three relates to the development of strategies through workshops with the community and its newly appointed volunteer community fire wardens. Step 4 relates to the sustainability of this program, where the authority will ensure that quarterly refresher training workshops are conducted along with monthly community engagements and meetings. Mr. Speaker, sir, one of the important aspects of this integrated community initiative is the valuable role in identifying those with special needs and ensuring that no one is left behind in any emergency. The opportunities for the nearest fire station crew to involve the community fire wardens in emergency drills and friendly competitions between fire warden teams and nearby communities. Mr. Speaker, sir, the community fire wardens are issued with certificates on completion of their training with the National Fire Authority, certifying them to carry out their roles as community fire wardens. Community fire wardens also conduct fire safety inspections for every house in the community. The compliance level of the home is illustrated by a small colored sticker pasted on the front door of that house. A green color sticker represents full compliance, amber represents semi-compliance, and red represents non-compliance to fire safety. Mr. Speaker, sir, this basically provides a snapshot on the fire safety compliance level of that community which should give anyone a sense of security if the compliance sticker is green. We believe that this new framework initiative will greatly contribute to the reduction of property fire that is claiming properties and lives. It will also make our youths more responsible towards the community. Mr. Speaker, sir, the only way to fight fire is to make all Fijians become firefighters making them understand the risk of fire and the steps they need to take to eliminate that risk. Finally, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to thank our past and present firefighters and volunteers who are our true heroes putting their lives 
in danger to protect Fijians from fire, disaster, and any emergencies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for allowing, allowing me to take the floor.